All right, Algebra 1, Lesson 70. This is on probability and then designated order, okay? I'll explain to you all that that means, okay? First thing I want you to do is when we're talking about probability, most of the time we're talking about um, coins that you're going to be using, uh, marbles, dice, um, even a spinner. Um, and so those are the things that we're going to be using to work or to do this, and I'm going to draw them. Okay, so the first example is we're talking about coins. Okay, now if you need previous lessons and the exact explanation of what probability is, you can go to my um, my eighth grade videos or even my seventh grade videos will probably be even better. Um, seventh grade. Uh, compound probability gives a great detail if you want to even know deeper and understand it deeper. So, alright, um, a fair coin, just meaning fair, meaning it has a heads and a tail, that's fair, um, is tossed three times and comes up heads every time. Then here's the question, what is the probability that on the next toss it will come up heads? Okay, so they're saying what is the probability of the next toss to come up heads. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, does what they said beforehand even matter? No. No. So they're just telling you a coin is tossed three times and comes up heads every time. Well, it may think, oh, then it's going to come up heads again, but you know with heads and tails it could do either one. So what is the probability on the next toss, which means this is the only toss that we're worried about? What is the probability that it will come up heads? Well, what are our choices on a coin? I'm either going to get a heads. heads or a tail. So how many different choices are there? Two. Okay, so there's two. And what's the ch um, chance of coming up a heads? I have a one out of those two chances of coming up heads. So the next toss, I have a one and two chance. What is the next toss to come up tails? A one and two chance. So that's how you would do that, okay? Now, these are considered independent events because I'm not dependent upon the last toss and the last toss or anything like that and I'll explain even deeper what that means in just a minute. Okay, let's do the next one. Now we're going to talk about marbles, okay? And it's always important to write down the information. So there are six green marbles, six green marbles, and there are eight red, okay? And placed in an urn. One marble is drawn and then dropped back in. Then a second marble is drawn and dropped back in. Both marbles were red. If another marble is drawn, what is the probability that it will be red? Now, do the other two terms matter? No. No, because what they're asking is, if another marble is drawn, what is the probability that it will be red? Okay, the first thing we need to do is figure out how many marbles are in this bag or this urn. And there are 14 total marbles. That's important for us to know. Okay? So what are, what are the chances that it will come up red? Well, I have 8 out of those 14 chances this, that it will be red. So every time you're working with probability, you always want to reduce. Okay? So let's reduce. 2 will go into 8 4 times. 2 will go into 14 7 times. So I have a 4 out of 7 chance that I'm going to get a red. Okay? And so, um, that's how you would figure out that. Now, it's important that they dropped the marbles back in. Yeah. That makes it an independent event or probability because um, I'm not dependent upon if one was taken out and left out because if one was taken out and left out, then everything becomes 13 instead of 14. And if it was a red one, it would be 7 now. 7 out of 13. So I'll explain that as we get deeper into this lesson, but I just wanted you to know that those are dependent if you were to take out a marble and keep it. Um, okay, this next one is um, a dice, okay? A single die, die is rolled three times, and they tell me the results. The first roll was a 1, the second roll was a 4, and the third roll was a 3. That's what they told me. In that order, one, four, three. That's how they wrote it. What is the probability that the next row will produce a number greater than two? Well, is it important that we know this, this, and this? No, because we're talking about the next row. So, that was just useless information. 
So what is the probability on the next row that it will produce a number greater than 2? Well, think about a dice. A dice has numbers 1 through 6 on it, right? Mm -hmm. So what's the, what are the chances of getting something greater than 2? Well, greater than 2 would be 3, would be 4, would be 5, and would be 6, right? So... In order for me to get something greater than 2, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 chances, right? Yeah. Out of a total of 6 different things on the dice. So I have 4 chances of getting something greater than 2 out of those 6 chances. And then you would reduce that and that would give us 2 thirds, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now. This next one, you're going to have to really pay attention and take notes on. It's really important. All right? This time they tell me we have two dice. And we're going to roll them, and they want to know this. There's going to be two different problems in this one problem. So this is 70.4, and here's what it says. What is the probability that the sum of the numbers rolled is 7? So whenever you're working with um, two dice, you're going to say roll one or dice one and roll two. And you need to keep them separated because it matters. And I'll explain that in just a minute. Um, now, what is the probability that the sum of the numbers rolled is seven? Now, sum means you add them and get an answer of seven. So, again, we have the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six to choose from, right? Because we're doing dice. So if row 1 is a 1 on the dice, then what would row 2 have to be to give me a sum of 7? 6. Very good. All right. Now, let's do the second row. If we got a 2, what would the row 2 be to get a 7? 5. Very good. All right. If we did a 3, what would row 2 be to four. get a 7? 4. 4. And then if we did a 4, roll 2 would have to be 3. three 5, if we rolled a 5 here, we'd have to have a 2 here. If we roll a 6 here, we'd have to have a 1 here. Now, you see what we just did? Yeah. All right. Now, here's what I want you to do. On this row, what are our chances of getting a 1? Uh, it's going to be 1 6. 1 6. Very good. What are our chances of getting a 2? One sixth. What are our chances of getting a three? One sixth, one sixth, one sixth, and one sixth. Mm -hmm. Look at this one. What are our chances of getting a six? One six, one six. This is important that you don't just skip. Whoops. One six. Okay. Now, every time if I roll once and then I roll second, you have to multiply in between. Mm -hmm. So, roll one, spin one. Marble one, whatever. If you do more, here's what you've got to do. You're going to have to multiply. So one times one is one, and six times six is 36. Again, one times one is one, and six times six is 36. You have to multiply between every row. All right, so this is going to be 136, 136, 136, 136, 136, 136. Okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, now once you get all of your answers right here, then you're going to add it. Mm -hmm. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then if you remember, we have like denominators, so then 36 just pulls down. Mm -hmm. We have 6 and 36 chances of getting a 7. Mm -hmm. Alright, now we would reduce that, which is going to give up, end up giving us a 1 6 when I reduce it. That makes yes. sense? Yes. All right, let's do another one because this one's going to be even, um, maybe not more confusing, but you definitely have to think through it. Okay? All right. So we've got, again, we're doing marbles. I mean, I'm sorry, dice. This one we're wanting to roll a number greater than 8. Okay? So greater than 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those are the numbers on the dice. Can I get a number greater than 8 if I roll a 1? If I roll a 6 here, that gives me a 7. So guess what? We can't even use 1. Mm -hmm. Alright, what about 2? If I, if I use 2 on the first roll, can I get something higher, greater than 8? No, that equals 8, but we want it greater than 8. Yeah. So even 2 won't work. What about 3? Three? 3, and we roll a 6, that equals 9. So that's good. 
All right, what about a four? For a roll of four, what would give me greater than eight? I could get a four here, and that would give me eight, but I need greater than eight. So a five. But I can also roll a four here and do six, which would give me ten. Yeah. So there's actually two with the number four. Yeah. See that? I can roll a four or five and get a nine, or a four or six and get a ten. Okay, I can't go any higher because there's nothing higher than a six. Yeah. Okay, so now I can move to the next number, five. Five and three would give me an eight, so I can't do four. that. I mean, greater than eight. Four. So four, five and five, five and six. Mm -hmm. Got it? Five and four give me nine, five and five give me ten, and five and six give me eleven. That's all greater than eight. All right, and then six. Six and... 1 would give me 7, that doesn't work. 6 and 2 would give me 8, that doesn't work. 6 and 3 give me 9, that's greater than 8. 6 and 4, 6 and 5, 6 and 6. Okay, now, um, basically we do the same thing. I have a 1 in 6 chance of getting a 3, a 1 in 6 chance of getting a 6. Okay, so what is this going to equal? 1, 36, right? Yep. Now, remember, we add all of these once we're done. So how many chances are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10 different outcomes. So guess what it's going to be? 10 over 36. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, if you need to do each one, 1, 6, 1, 6, which equals 136, and do 136 plus 136 plus 136 plus 136, all the way for 10 of them, you would get 1036. And then when I reduce that, I would get um, 518. Two or one of both of them, 518s. I think that's right. Yes. Okay. So you understand? Mm -hmm. All right. Now these next ones that we're going to be working on, um, I believe, are dependent. So let me look. Uh, maybe not all of them, but we'll see. Okay. So let's look at the next one. This one is designated order, which means I did this first, I did this next, I did this next, okay? So, a fair coin is tossed four times. Now, remember, toss one, this is how you do it. Uh, roll one, roll two, roll three, whatever. Toss one, toss two, toss three, toss four, okay? Those are my tosses. Then it says, what is the probability that the first two times it comes up heads? The first time, in order for me to get a heads, I have a what? Yes. One and two choice yep. chance. What is what is the second one? Is it first two times it's going to come up heads? I have a one and two choice chances. Yep. All right. The last one, the last two times it comes up tails. Again, you have a one and two chance of getting tails and a one and two chance to get a heads. Okay. Every toss, what do you do? You multiply in between. Mm -hmm. Remember that. So one times one times one times one is one. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. Final answer, 16. Me getting a heads, heads, tails, tails, I have a 1 in 16 chance. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's how that works. All right, last one. This is a spinner. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now here's what it says. A spinner shown is spun twice. So spin one and spin two. And it says, what is the probability that the spinner stops on four? Well, if it stops here, then I have a one in four chances of it stopping on the four. And then what are the chances that it'll stop on a three after that? Well, I have a one in four chances, again, of it stopping on a three. So if I multiply that, I have a one in 16 chances of it stopping on a four first and then a three. Mm -hmm. All right, that is lesson 70.